Hey Pelicans, it's Mrs. Haynes with the Pelican Podcast. It is 3821 March already. I can't even believe it. And there's so much to celebrate this month. There's a ton of stuff going on. I know we don't have any off days for school, but boy, oh boy, is there a lot of action going on. Johnny Appleseed Day. It's on 311, March 11th. And you'll notice I changed the date that the way I write the date up there is a little different. Hmm, something going on there. Maybe you'll see a pattern. Johnny Appleseed is legend to be. He is, it's kind of a folk tale, um, but the legend says that he is the reason that we have apples all over the United States. So if you don't know that folk tale, um, go on over to Epic or to Sora and take a look and see if you can find um, a book about it. I think it's a, a really fun story, no matter how, how old you are. Um, kind of along the same line as um, Paul Bunyan, things like that. So Johnny Appleseed Day, you could eat an apple or you could plant an apple tree. Plant a flower day comes on 312. You'll notice that same pattern there in the dates. What's what's up with that? So um, I think you'll see in a minute, by the way. Um, plant a flower day. You can get a seed and plant a flower and maybe it'll bloom in time for you to be able to share it with your family um, over East, over spring break. So that's a possibility. It's a great way to greet spring. National Pie Day. Now, I'm not talking about pie that you eat with a fork. Not that I'm a, not a big fan. I think it's pretty obvious I'm a fan of pie. Um, but National Pie Day, it comes on the day 314, or other words, 3.14, just like the number pie in math. And you upper graders will get this, and you'll probably do a lot of celebrating, I would imagine, that Monday, which is 3.14, 314, um, that teaches you what pie can be used for and what what exactly that that number um, has, why that number has such a special place in mathematics. So super fun day and, you know, no reason not to celebrate with real pie. Just saying. Uh, Women's History Month is coming up. That's that's March. We're, we're here. Um, and it's going to be a great month with all kinds of fabulous people. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a second. Why do we celebrate Women's History Month? Well, when we highlight women who've made history or, or making a great difference in our society. Um, girls, and not just girls, but kids of every gender, um, learned that women can do amazing things. And that was something that wasn't always in the history books, especially when I was growing up. We didn't have Women's History Day. Everybody in the history books was mostly men. Maybe Betsy Ross got mentioned because she sold the flag, but very few women were mentioned in the history books. Um, now we know the stories of a lot more women who did amazing things in history and are doing amazing things today. And we want that to inspire everybody, especially our girls, to do great things. So I want to talk to you about a couple of really amazing people. And I'm going to shrink me down a little bit here because they're the ones we need to focus on. Um, this lady here, Karen Spark Jones, she did a lot of amazing stuff. She, well, I know a lot of you probably have Alexa at home, right? So your mom might say, hey, Alexa, play um, um, play Lady Gaga for me. Play Pink. And what happens? The song comes on, right? The, the artist comes on. Um, almost everybody knows that if you talk to an iPhone, you say, hey, Siri. Let's see if she's listening, shall we? Hey, Siri. Tell me a joke. Did you see the toddler who was wearing sunglasses and having a tantrum? He was throwing shades. <laughs> Toddler throwing shades. That was good, Siri. So we can talk to our devices now. And the reason we can talk to our devices is because of Karen Spark Jones. She, you know, at the, at the time that she was, was starting out in her field, it was mostly men in computer programming. And they were trying to figure out a way to get regular people like us to be able to code to get computers to understand us. But Karen Spark Jones said, why don't we just teach the computers how to understand human speech? And she came up with one of the very first voice recognition programs for computers. She also wrote a thesaurus, which is a book that has all kinds of different, you know, words with different meanings in it um, and different words that mean, mean the same as other words. And she wrote a thesaurus for computers to use so they would understand what we say better. Pretty cool. And this is my favorite part about her, I have to admit. Um, she had a whole nother house 
next door to her house just for her books and her collections. I think I need that house. I think my family would tell you that I probably need that house. Yes. I think that was the best idea ever. <laughs> I really need a house for all my books. But she's really amazing. And she's one of the reasons, too, that a lot of our kids with disabilities um, can use text to speech and speech to text um, for things like their assignments and for standardized testing. And um, so she's helped out um, uh, the community with um, all kinds of wonderful ways that we can access technology. So she's the reason that Alexa and Siri exist. She's the reason you can go to Google and type something in in English and not have to do it in Fortran or DOS or Linux code. Um, she's the reason that we can do all those things. So I thought that was a pretty amazing story. And she's not someone you usually hear about. So I thought I'd bring her along for the ride today. And the other person I'm highlighting today is Wilma Mankiller. What a great name, huh? Mankiller in the Cherokee tribe actually means uh, like a lookout or um, a sentry, someone watching to make sure that everybody is safe and alerting everyone uh, if someone is to come and, and um, come and, and invade, right? So kind of a protector. Um, she was a member of the Cherokee tribe. She uh, left her family at 11 years old. Um, she was promised a job in San Francisco through a government job program. And there's a lot of unemployment. I think there still is, sadly, um, on a lot of um, reservation land. And so she left at 11 years old to go to San Francisco all by herself and worked. And she uh, fought for medical care and treatment for her people and other indigenous people um, throughout her whole life. She ran for deputy chief of her tribe and won. And then she ran for chief and won twice. Yes. They elected her chief of the entire Cherokee Nation twice. That's pretty cool. And this is the part that I thought was so impressive. She is so tough. Man, she can do, she, she was amazing. Um, she dealt with multiple cases of cancer. She dealt with life-threatening kidney failure. And she was in a head-on car collision and lived to tell about it. She is tough. And so it's no wonder that she was able to keep fighting and make things happen for her people. So I thought she was just a terrific lady to talk about today. And I hope you enjoyed her story. Now, we also have some pretty amazing people that we need to talk about right here at Hollywood Beach. And doggone, that little strip keeps coming up, but that's okay. We have our first ever HBS Virtual Spelling Bee that just happened. It was hosted by Mrs. Russell. And it, we had, our pronouncer was Dr. Walker, the superintendent, and she did an amazing job. And the judges were Miss Abison and Miss Hickson and myself. And it was such a good B. Oh my gosh, so suspenseful, so exciting. We wound up with two alternates, two runners up, because it was that tough a B. Yes. And here are two runners up for you. These are our spelling bee champion alternates. We have Liliana Russell and we have Mohammed Bador. So great job, guys. Excellent work. We're so proud of you. And if anything happens and our spelling bee champ can't make it to go to the county B. You're up, guys. And then we also have Dari Hornsby, HBS Virtual Spelling Bee Champion. How awesome is that? <laughs> Super exciting. And I sent some questions to Dari and asked him to just kind of read them over and, and tell us what, um, what his answers were for it. So I think you'll enjoy these. Um, I just had some things that I really, really wanted to know about. I am Dari Show. I am a fourth grader and I am in Mrs. Garcia class and I am the Spelling Bee Champion. Question number one, Dari, have you always been good at spelling or is it something you have had to work at? I am good at spelling because I read a lot of books. Mm. Question number two, how did you prepare yourself for the virtual spelling bee? I worked every day with my parents and never stopped. Question yes. number three. You seem so calm during the beat. How did you stay so chill? Do you have any tips? I stayed calm during the spelling bee by breathing slowly mm. and breathing calmly. And my tips are breathing calmly and never give up. Question right. number four. How does it feel to be the champ? And what advice do you have for other pelicans? about being successful in life. 
It feels great to be champ. It's my it's the first time being the spelling bee champion. And I'm and I'm really happy that I'm the spelling bee champion. And my and my advice is to never give up. Thank you, Dari. That was awesome. Good job. I loved his answers. He's good at spelling because he reads a lot. That makes really good sense to me. I thought that was pretty good. Well, thank you so much for your interview and congratulations on being the HBS Virtual Spelling Bee Champion. We can't wait to hear how you do at the county level. We're all rooting for you. So it's Let's Read, let's read Time, Sora Book of the Week. Um, this week, I have a lot of books about women's history and about some amazing people that everybody should read about. So first of all, for our little ones, we have the ABCs of what I can be. And it's it highlights boys and girls um, in the kinds of jobs that they can do when they grow up, the kind of people they can be when they grow. And it's a wonderful little read, picture book. So it's it's um, got very limited limited text. So Good for our kinder and first and awesome to read moms and dads um, and families with um, your little ones. And for my second and third grade Pelicans, awesome book called Girls with Guts. And it's all about girls that broke world records. Super fun. I couldn't believe some of the world records that I was reading. It was amazing. So I really suggest that book for you. And my fourth through sixth, there's a great series called Rebel Girls and Rebel Girls highlights amazing girls from history. And one is Rebel Girls Explore. And the other one that I read was Rebel Girls Lead. I think there's more in the series as well, but those were the two I read. Just awesome. Really cool books. So check those out if you get a chance on Sora this week. Fun Friday. It's Wild Hat Day this week. Yep. Got to make sure you get your wild hats on. I will personally put on many different wild hats and I will send the pictures to Miss Hickson. And I want to see what your wild hats are going to look like. So just think outside the box, people. Be creative. If you want to, if you have a cool hat, if you want to create a cool hat, show us your wildest hat. It's going to be good. And when you're done, take a picture and send it to Miss Hickson at wineemi.org for our next movie. Okay. That's it this week for the Pelican Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful interview with Dari Hornsby, our Spelling Bee champ. Yay, Dari. And I hope you enjoyed our highlights for some of those amazing women in history. Be sure you go find one of the, the amazing women in your life and tell them how incredible that they are in order to celebrate Women's History Month. Thanks so much, guys. We will see you next time here on the Pelican Podcast.